And now we look at the Gospel. On this Feast of the Assumption, we're celebrating the Vigil right now. And uh, we're at the Gospel, which is very short, like the second reading. I guess they're so deep and so packed that the Church wants us to take the time to really break it open. So, this is the text. Uh, we're, we're in uh, chapter 11 of Luke, starting with verse 27. Um, the, the, first, our Lord is talking about the return of an unclean spirit. An unclean spirit goes out. This is not in our liturgical reading. It's the verses immediately. And um, can't find a place. He says, I'll go back to where I came from. And so he goes back and takes seven others more wicked than himself. And the last condition of that person is worse than the first. What's his point? If you've had a conversion, if you've been delivered from sin, watch it. Continue to grow in your union with Christ because it's not over till it's over. Huh? Uh, and it's not over till you breathe your last. Uh, there's this famous story about, I think it's uh, Abba Makarios, great father of the desert, and he's dying. And Satan is standing there saying, well, Makarios, you've won. Makarios says, not yet. I'm not going to be tricked in my deathbed. You know, not yet. Give me another hour or two when I die, and then I've won. And so that's uh, what this uh, is saying. Like, okay. So while he was saying this, the saying this is this part, an unclean spirit goes out of someone, it roams through the arid regions looking for a rest, and he goes back to where he came from. Uh, as he was saying all this, while he was speaking, a woman from the crowd called out and said to him, Blessed is the womb that carried you and the breasts at which you nursed. He replied, Rather, blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. Keep it. That's all there is to the gospel. Why? Because we're celebrating the blessedness of Mary who heard the word of God and kept it, even in her body. And she's the Ark of the Covenant. And so, what we have to do as we listen, you know, as we reflect on these lines, uh, how can we be blessed? And she heard the word of God. It entered through her ear and took residence in her womb. Now, that was for Mary. But it also entered through her ear and took residence in her heart. And that's for us as well. So, it's very important you know, to cultivate an awareness of the Word. Read it. You know, uh, if you've got one of those Bibles on tape, you could put that in the car or on disc or whatever. Uh, but, you know, I used to do that a lot. And I got so gripped listening, I'd go right by my turn. I had to stop, turn around, and come all the way back. So I said, maybe that's not so good for me I had to do that. Uh, so I don't do it anymore. But blessed are those who hear it. That's more than having it just go into your tympanum here in your, in your ear and rattle around and make, you know, you got to hear it. Uh, you know, the hippies used to say, you know, uh, You know, you're talking to me, but I can't hear you because who you are is talking too loud. So we have to hear the Word, thirst for the Word. Even just hear it with our eyes, if you know what I mean. The ancients, since for them, writing was like a musical notation. See, it isn't real till it's performed physically. This is just notation. Ah. Uh, the idea of reading silently. Uh, Augustine, for instance, when in his confessions, he's talking about St. Ambrose, the great preacher and the one who converted Augustine. And he said, you know, 
I was amazed when I saw him sitting there reading and I couldn't hear anything. That was not the way the ancients... The word is the word when it's alive. It's vibrating the air. But he said he had a, had a weak voice and he didn't want to wear it out. So he read to himself. But he didn't, you know. Uh, you can try that too. You, when you read out loud, you have to pay attention to every word. And you hear it as well as, it's up to you. And of course, if you're in the living room, there's four other people, you wouldn't do it. But uh, anyway, what does it mean then for, oh, your mother was a lucky woman. The woman cried out, blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast that fed you. Oh, your mother was a lucky woman. And Jesus says, rather, blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it or keep it. Those are the blessed ones. Well, who heard the word of God better than Mary? And when the word is, you shall conceive and bear a son and bear him in your womb, and you shall call him and so forth, she heard that sound so deeply that it happened. Uh, she kept that word. And she must have gone through many a day wondering, is this for real? Is this child in my womb really the son of God? And then she saw him insulted and attacked. And then when she saw him on the cross, is that really my son? Is that really? Did I bear that man in my body and he's really the son of God? Yes. She'd say right away. Look at the pain. So, blessedness, and this is why we have this text on the Feast of the Assumption, the Vigil of the Assumption. Who ever heard the word of God like Mary and kept it? He became flesh in her womb. You shall conceive and bear a son. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. And so, it's saying then, do you want to be eternal? Do you want to be internal like you are, body and soul, not just a spirit playing around someplace? Then listen to the Word of God and keep it. Take time every day to read it yourself and cherish it. And ask the Lord, the Word of God, to take root in you and to be the energy by which you live. It's astonishing. Now, who brings that Word alive in us like that? The Holy Spirit. And you can, the right word, you can feel it. You can know when the Holy Spirit, you know, is, is moving you and saving you from sin. You know, somebody may have done something terrible to you yesterday. And today, when, when you start to think about it, there's this movement of forgiveness toward that person. Cash in on it. That's the word of God. This Holy Spirit moving in you. Don't say, I'm, I'm going to, I'll do that later. I, I got to think about what he said to me, what he did. You don't have to do that. Let this movement of forgiveness just take over your being. And uh, you'll hear the same kind of word that that lady, oh, blessed are you. As our Lord says, you see, blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. And so, Instead of mulling over something that hurts you, listen to the Holy Spirit saying, pray for that person, love that person, forget it. And if you hear that word and obey it, blessed are you in this world and in the next. And so, because Our Lady did that, not only in that moment of conception, but all the other preliminary conceptions of the word when the word was part of her she lived it she adored it she she gave it flesh in her actions I mean I mean some of the neighbors were hard to get along with and how come you're not married you know you're old enough to get married what do you you know why are you keeping your father waiting or whatever and she heard that but she heard the word of God and she knew forgive, love, win over. 
That's the Word of God. And then to hear this Word of God, you see, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Live by that. That's how much He loves us. And so we celebrate this assumption of Mary. When that Word, you see, who was in her from childhood, she was immaculately conceived, huh? dwelt in her. And all of a sudden now, through this invitation of God, through the angel, she accepts this role. She knew the scriptures. She knew it was not going to be an easy role. I mean, a simple thing, a single woman pregnant in a small town in those days. Uh, the Lord saw that that was protected. But because uh, she could have been stoned. Uh, and so uh, she kept the word of God. She cherished the word of God. She worshipped the word of God dwelling in her. And that's why, you see, we now celebrate that that humanity, her body, was assumed into heaven. And we'll be looking at that uh, next week uh, when we do the, the, the Mass of the, uh, of the day. Both of these are for the Feast of the Assumption, but, you know, we do one, then we do the other. And uh, just think of this assumption. Huh? Just think of it. How beautiful she is. I mean, we rejoice, don't we? It couldn't have happened to a nicer person that she be transformed by the very divine life, body and soul, and never know corruption. And what is she saying? Look at me. This is where he wants to call you. This is what he wants to do for you. Yes, you will die. And you will be buried, and your body will corrupt. But that is not the end of you. Even in your physicality. And you were listening to the Pope. You know, the subjectivity. And in the depth of that subjectivity, divine life. And that divine life supports the life even of our physicality forever. And she's the first fruits. She's the model. And that's why it's such an important day to celebrate. It's not just a whole day of obligation, you got to go to church. It's thinking about where you're going as a human being and the promise held out to you. And that's why our Lord, you know, could have assumed her into heaven and just kept her for himself. But instead, he finally had it broadcast to the whole world in 1950 when the belief of the church was was solemnized and made, you know, an article of faith. That's what the Lord has in store for us. And so, it's worth it to stay out of sin, to forgive our enemies, to practice virtue, to care for the poor, to, to give, forgive and give, and listen and obey the Lord, pay attention to Him, spend time with Him, be like with any friend to be with him so that one day uh, just as with Our Lady he will say come you not just your spirit you into the joy of your Lord Amen